Welcome to Self Perfected. Recording it. Oh, we're on. Hey, Hello. Everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, we're going to figure out what we're going to talk about right now. Um, maybe, oh, Katie's not probably on the live stream. So, Christine? Yes. She's going to tell Katie. us. She's going to say, what was the, I'm going to ask, what was the topic that we were going to talk about? All right. There was a, or oh, there was one point Katie wanted me to talk about, and I'm trying to remember what it was. Something about kids, something about. Katie, oh, if you're in the crazy, chat, what was crazy the topic trans of today? Thing. I forget what it was. Um, anyways, what do you guys want to talk about first? How was y'all's weekend so far? All right, buddies. Christine and Drake were over. Had burgers. It's getting close yeah. to the time. Man, that is about to pop. The little baby boy is going to come out of there. How are you feeling? Like, give some people some insight into you're walking this process. You're, you guys are doing all this. And how are you? What's, what's going on inside? Because I, I know, because I've been there. Huh? Oh, um, hold on. Do that again. <laughs> Drake, where's your Jefferson mug? I don't have it today. <laughs> Next time. All right. <laughs> Jefferson, forever in our hearts. Yeah, I remember when... Uh, I don't remember if I told the story of when I went skydiving, but I remember when I imagined going skydiving. I've never been like, skydiving, but I've imagined it quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Before I went skydiving, when I had imagined going skydiving... Um, I was like, oh, it's going to be crazy. You're going to be going up in the plane. That'd be fucking crazy. I'll be shitting my pants. And when I jump out of the plane, that'll be like, like an orgasm moment, the moment, right? It's like you jump out of the plane, you're like, holy shit. And so, and I, I wouldn't imagine it to that specificity, but it's just like, what would skydiving be like? Oh, it'd probably be crazy, you know? Um, and I remember, because I'm walking this process, when I did go skydiving, I had already been using techno theater and walking this process for like a year or so. And I understood what energy was and how to direct energy and how to not participate in all these different points and energy highs and energy lows and the nature of energy and how to transcend it. And uh, I remember I was hanging out with somebody in Australia and I was just there for the day. Just hanging out there was really fun. It was just like, it's kind of like you're just on like a campgrounds almost just doing fun stuff and like, you know, playing soccer and walking on the slack line or whatever. At the end of it, because my friend was just doing dives, they just keep going. They like practicing stuff in the air and they roll up and they jump again. She did like, I don't know, five drums. And she's like, do you want to go? I'm like, ah, I'm like, ah, she's like, yeah, come on, come on. They got you a discount. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, let's do it. You know, I'm like, let's do it. Last, last plane ride. I'll just, I'll go on it. I just remember going on it and being like, this is cool. But if I'm just honest with myself and I don't go into the energy of like, like hyping myself up, I'm like, like, I feel like I've done this before. Not even so, but that's like the energy kind of thing. It was just like, okay, cool. Like I make sense. And then I went up on the plane and it's a weird plane. You're sitting on these little chairs and you're like, you know, dick to ass with like a bunch of people. And then two rows of that. And then, you know, the trip, the pl plane's going I'm like, oh, this is a cool plane. Like this is part is like pretty interesting. And I remember you, you're attached to your homie in your, in your back because you're not allowed to, to jump alone. And then I was like, oh, let's come into that moment of jumping out of the plane. I'm like, yeah, I feel no kind of way. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Jump. I'm like, well, this is beautiful. And, uh, it, it felt, um, horror for the course <laughs> felt like, yep, this is just, yep. This is, what is it? Wednesday. Okay, cool. And that's how I feel about the birth. I'm excited for it. I'm excited to have a child here and that's going to be really awesome. But uh, the way I was imagining it about how I'd feel now is like, ooh, like, oh my God. But, uh, but yeah, I just see the next level of responsibility. So I'm like, let me just focus on taking that on as much as I can now. And Mayla's really excited because she's like, oh my God, like he's, he's finally coming. She's like, I'm going to push a baby out, you know? And like, finally, like it's been so long that I've been preparing for this. And she's, it's been unbelievable watching her walk this process because, you know, she'll talk to the midwife and she'd be like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then she'll tell me after she's like, it makes me feel really comfortable because I, I know everything they're talking about. Mm. Right. Same thing with uh, the doula, which is like, for those of you who don't know, doula is like kind of like the, uh, 
um it's like kind of like the, the nurse the nurse to the doctor it's like you your know? wife it's like the pregnant woman's hype, hype yeah is. so they'll they'll take care of any like <clears throat> physical pains or make sure they're really comfortable throughout the, the birthing process and support with that and uh it's like the second second hand woman and um yeah like as she came over and we all chatted and you now it's like yeah like everything she's saying like i know and, and they were acknowledging like okay like you're like where the average woman is at compared to where you're at like you're good. I don't have to tell anything else. Like, all right, see you later. I'll see you when you like, give birth. So it, it was cool watching me that walk this process uh, to get really stable within the point. And to the degree where like, she's like, Oh, I know that I can support other women to do this really effectively. Mm -hmm. Cause that's the next wave that we want to create. So it's really exciting to see that process. Yeah. So like imagine a woman <clears throat> coming into the group, you know, after Maylet's given birth just, and then just imagine a mid a woman. Okay, just imagine a woman. Okay. What is a woman? Just imagine. I, I'm imagining so many different possibilities right yeah. now. I, it's hard to pin it down to something specific. Mm. Um, mm. But you know, like, but imagine like a woman coming to the group now, or in the near, you know, relatively near future, and you've got you know Mela, you've got Jess, you've got other women, including Katie, who've done this, yeah. and like they are all now able to support. So it's not just coming from one person. I think Amy right. announced it. Yeah. Amy, Amy, oh, Amy, Amy as well. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, and then also to give credit to Mela individually, like reading the books, like doing the points, questioning things, like supporting herself, all of that. Right. So then having a group of women who can then support, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like, okay, uh, I can't talk with Mela right now. She's busy, but I can go talk to Jess or I can go talk to Katie or whoever. Exactly. Know? Yeah. And being able to like, <clears throat> what's different is, you know, you can get that, you can go join a pregnant mom circle and you can get some of that, you know, assuming they know what they're talking about in this particular imaginary circle, but they don't have the principles. They're not using the same tools. They're not doing the self-perfected cookie challenges and, and ice cream challenges, you know, like they, there's no camaraderie really that's based on something real. It's just kind of like, a, Oh, you're in here. Cause you're pregnant. Cool. We're, there's people who are like obsessive about pregnancy and birth. And then, but what else is there, you know? And so within this group, it's like you get a little bit of everything because you're walking within the principles. And I mean, there's a lot of amazing things that the women are doing in that group. Um, I'm thinking about maybe joining for a week or two. I just, as, if I'm going to identify as a woman and then just like join for a little <laughs> bit, kind of test it out, you know, see how it goes. And then, well, it was really cool. I just stay in there. Yeah. I only I, allow I, AFABs. AFABs. What is that? I again? am a fab a man. A, a, fe <laughs> a female, female at birth. Okay. A female at birth. Assigned female at birth. AFAB. Um, yeah, so I, I remember. Is? Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Shit. Um, the uh, when me and Maylat were uh driving back, so when we were on our road trip from Canada to, to Florida a couple of weeks ago, um, she was on the call, so I was just driving. She, the, the the women's call was playing, and it was epic. It was the women. I think it was like a part two, uh, where all the women were sharing their birth stories and uh, and the good birth stories and the ugly birth stories and it was so cool seeing how some of the ladies in that group who 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 gave birth and they didn't have regrets but they saw the mistakes that they made and hearing them talk about it i was like wow i could imagine how much you had to process with these tools in order to just share this story to, with the stability that you're sharing it person x you know and i was like blown away i was like everybody needs to hear these stories because it's specific with pregnancy specifically because it's such a charged situation such an emotional situation it's you either know it or you don't and the moment you have a little bit of doubt about what the next step is and the doctor tells you what to do or whatever and they tell you you're going to kill your baby if you don't do it you're like fuck okay uh, and i've heard countless stories countless can't even count them uh, that being said I'm, I'm not that good at counting can't get past my my hands but still can't count them hey bro did you know you could use your toes too you can use your you toes. gotta teach me that afterwards because i think we'll i would have been able to count it after just take off um, your shoes <laughs> but countless stories multiple stories where um doctors and, and medical professionals are telling women you're going to kill your baby if you don't listen yeah. to it. like yeah. and it's your fault that you're, you're going to kill your child you're going to kill them you're going to this is a common theme by the way yeah, yeah. beyond just pregnancy as well right like the you're going to kill somebody if you don't 
Yeah. Right. Like think about the whole COVID thing. Think about yeah. the, we'll uh, we, were, we were talking about, were we talking about this on the last podcast on the Lupron thing where they were saying like, I don't think we mentioned this or yeah, we did. Like they're saying to the parents, your child will commit suicide if you don't help yeah. them transition. Yeah. yeah. Like you get, like they'll kill themselves. Like the high suicide rate is super high. They don't tell you it's actually higher afterwards, but, but yeah, just, that's a, that's a common point. It's just fear. It's just like the same thing of how you sell someone a security system. Like, well, they, someone could come in and rape and kill your whole family. So you're like, okay, so I'm going to put this like buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> so at least while the rape is going on, there's also a loud background noise. So nobody like- can hear the screen. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if that's helpful or harmful <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but um but yeah it's 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 just like the ultimate manipulation so if you're not if, if you have doubt or for those of you who know the tree of evil uh, if you have doubt or if you see yourself not equal to the doctor or whatever because you have a lack of education you're going to go into fear and the likelihood of being taken advantage of and again, it's, it's not even on a, the doctor is evil per se, like any more evil than the system at large, because they're just, right, they're not that. especially evil. They're just evil. Like everyone else. Yeah. It's like they, they, from their education, they're like, if you don't take X to, 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 to make you feel better, or if you don't cut your stomach open or whatever, like you're, you're fucked. Like, there's no way that you're going to get through this you know so yeah but there's maybe also an element of you know like when you've done like or you've heard of people in the past doing like some kind of like door-to-door with some product where it's like they're just in essence scamming the person into getting it you know what i mean like coming up with all kinds of shit of like why you need to do it and you know like there's all this dishonesty in the background and everything but there's a point where you know or they know what they're doing. Yeah. I, I think there's a element of that too within the medical yeah. profession. Because you know? the, the the reality is there's the conscious mind, the like, oh, this makes sense, which is 0.5. Yeah. But what's way more powerful is the money point, which is yeah. 24.5%. The subconscious is run on money, sex, survival, et cetera. And that is going to project way harder. Yeah. Right. That's why if you, you know, I, 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 you know, bump myself a little bit. And the doctor's like, we got to check your heart. I'm like, you don't need to check my fucking heart. <laughs> I, I hurt my chin a little bit. I'm fine. You know, I don't need stitches. I'm fine. I'm going to leave. He's like, yeah, but let's check your heart. I'm like, no, dude, <laughs> you're not checking my heart. But let's just, he's like, uh, we're just gonna we need to check for erectile dysfunction bit. too. I'm going to touch you downstairs. And like, <laughs> you're like, that's not, yeah, not uh, we're do, we do colonoscopies with my finger now. I need one. Cause you didn't hear how old are you? Okay. Yeah. You got to do it. um yeah so just that point of like the whether they're consciously aware or not the money factor is definitely a massive factor hey i I went uh yesterday uh katie joined this homesteading group on facebook and it's for like local people in this general local area like you know within like 100 miles i don't know whatever and uh she she's been on there following stuff and she was like um she told me on yesterday, but you know, this is obviously a few days before that she was like, Hey, in a couple of days, there's going to be this class. You could call it. It's really just like you go over to someone's farm and then they're going to be slaughtering chickens. And then you can slaughter chickens with them and they're going to show you everything. And then you can even take one of the chickens home that you slaughtered. And you know, you'll learn how to do it. Cause, cause Katie was considering maybe we should raise our own chickens for meat. Cause we eat chicken, you know? And, and then I've been, it's on an interesting coincidence, I saw this thing from Dark Horse podcast, but they were talking about how they, they chlorinate chickens, like after they slaughter them in these factories and stuff, they dip them in bleach. Oh. And like, there's like all the, and they were just discussing like how it doesn't make sense and there's other ways to do it. So that was just coincidental. And I'm like, well, yeah, okay, maybe we could all learn how to do it or whatever, right? So I went and I did that. And it was pretty cool. Like I, I, I think I, I did like 15 chickens you know, and like from start to finish, like you, you, you know, you have to like hang them. Chickens? Yes. Yeah. yeah Yourself? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there was quite a few there. And it was kind of, there. Was, when I got there, there was only two other people. And those two people were the ones who lived there. Oh. And there was only one other family coming and they were coming late. So we got started and it was, so it was just me, them doing it first and then showing me. And then I got to do it. And so we're just all working together, like doing it. Cause they had, a, they had a bunch of chickens they needed to process that were their chickens. Right. So it was kind of like, it's kind of like, they're going to throw like a little party if you want to call it that and have people come over to help them. And then they're like, 
while we're doing it, we'll teach you. So you learn something. So it didn't even cost me anything except my oh, time. Wow. Really? It was pretty cool. I mean, That's I would have paid for it. Yeah. You yeah. killed the chicken or was it already dead? No, like they were in cages oh. and I had to take the chicken out, put it in this cone, let it chill out, cut its jugular until, and like let it bleed until it like stopped bleeding. Mm. And then you dip it into like a relatively warm water so it makes the, the feathers easily come out. And then there's this machine you put it in, which has like these, it looks like rubber. It looked like some kind of weird sex thing. It was like this big circular thing with all these like rubber nipples sticking in into it. And then at the bottom. And at first I'm like, when would we get to that part of things? What, what's this about? And they're like, oh, that's just the deep plucker. But it was cool. It, it was like, it spins and it like pulls all the feathers off, you know, once you've dipped it. So like they could, you could pull them out by hand, but it takes a long time. And I was like amazed by it. Like you, you pull the chicken out and it's like clean like it was amazing wow. so then you take it over to the table and then they they taught me how to like cut its neck off um <clears throat> cut the cut the legs off you know up to like the bone where they have the drumstick and then how to get all the organs out properly without you know rupturing the intestine and there's certain glands you have to cut off and stuff just prepare it so then later you put it in ice and then later we put them into bags that we dipped in hot water to like shrink them and then you put that in your freezer so like when you get it out of the, the store, it's like in that bag already. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, uh, I'll show you a picture. Like, and they had like, they had like labels. They put on them. pull a chicken up. Just like they had like labels that you put on it. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if I have any that are labeled. I thought I thought I sent one to Avery. Let me just check real quick. Oh no, I don't have any. I have some better pictures of them in the bags, but they're not sealed up. But it's like they put a little label so you can write the weight and the date that you did it. But like if I if you didn't know any better, I showed it to you, you would think it was one that you bought in the store. Hmm. I mean, it looks like you bought it in the store. Um so, anyways, so I brought one of those home and then I brought some carcasses and organ meat for the dogs and stuff like that. And like the carcasses for like maybe making a bone broth or something. The reason I brought it up was while we were there talking to everybody. <clears throat> And of course, I'm telling them about what I do and everything, which is pretty cool because there's a lot of people in that community that they know that have kids and are doing homesteads and don't want to be in the education system and all that. As we're talking, like, uh, you know, like I'm like, okay, what's that thing? Oh, how does that work? I'm asking a lot of questions, right? And they have like this big pot, which is basically, I think it was like a fryer. It's like a big pot that you put on like a little gas burner. And mm-hmm. like you could fry a turkey or a chicken in it, but they were using it to warm the water up to be able to dip it to get the feathers off, right? Um, and and they had to they had to keep constantly turning it back on, checking the temperature, and it was too low. Ah, we put more water, too high, whatever. And he was like, you know, there are electric ones that just regulate the temperature. He's like, but you know, they're like they're really expensive, like they're like four hundred dollars, right? And I'm thinking like, well, I'm definitely getting one of those. Like if I do this, I'm definitely going to get one of those. But uh, it, but it was like constantly because they showed me around their little farm, like they had, they were growing vegetables and it was all just for themselves. They weren't, it wasn't like they were doing it as a business. And the guy had a job, like he was an older guy. He must've been like 60, maybe something ish, you know, almost retirement age. He said he was going to retire in a couple of years and his wife also worked. And then they had their older daughter who was like, you know, my age or older maybe. Um, and, uh, but he, he was talking about, you know, like the wife didn't cook a lot because she worked. And when he comes home, he can't really do it because it's like, he comes in at five or so. And then he's got two hours of work on the farm and all this. And I'm thinking, I just, I noticed how much there was this discussion of the limitations because they had to think about the money. Oh, and it was like, oh yeah, you know, we can't really feed the chickens as much. So we have to put them out on the grass right now. And kind of, cause you know how the prices of food went up, you know, and the grains, like, you know, I used to pay $14 a bag. Now I'm paying $17 a bag. Can you believe that? And I'm like, Okay. You know, like just seeing how much the money part like influences. So when I hear people talk about money's not the most important, thing, you know, these spiritual new age bullshit, you know, like hmm. money's not the most important thing, but then when you, and oh, people are happy. Like I know these people who don't have money and they're happy and all this, but I, but I'm talking to these people and these are good people. They're not bad people. They're just kind of like, they're very helpful. They're nice. They're friendly. They want to show you stuff. Like they're not out there like trying to fucking like, you know, mass vaccinate people and, you know, take away everyone's property. They're not fucking Klaus Schwab. They're just normal people. You know, of course they're going to have zero effect on the system. Um, but they're totally fucked over by the money system. Do you know what I mean? Like the people who are playing with the markets over here just to make money, 
is affecting the food prices, is affecting these people's lives in a very direct manner, like very clearly. And so it was just interesting how much the conversation always kept coming back to, oh yeah, but you know, like that, you could get that one, but you know, he's like, show me this scraper. So when you try to get the lungs out of the chicken, that's like one of the last things you do inside, you scrape out the lungs and it's like, they're stuck to the rib cage. And it's like, it's not hard to do, but it's like, you have to work at it with your fingers and it's like, they're, they're really gooey. And so it's like hard to get it out, but he had this scraper and he was like, you know, these things are like $25. He was like, so you don't have to get it. I would just, I don't even use it. You could just, I just have it here so people can see it. But then I tried it and it just, whoop, they come right out. I'm like, oh, I'm definitely getting one of these. Like whoop, whoop, lungs are out. And like, you know, they're all, it gets them out like just real easy. So it's just, you saw like how much constantly it was like this discussion about the limitation because of money and so forth constantly, you know, and how much, you know, as if you know a lot more about like investing and things like that and like markets and stuff than I do, but it's like, how much of it is just the big guys manipulating, you know, and then you have the small guys who are like trying to white ride the waves and play the game. And of course they're all taking probably lessons from people who are probably in some way funded by the people who are, you know, it's like, so they can predict exactly what you're going to do. You know, you know, that kind of stuff happens, but it's like, there's so much influence in terms of how money affects just every single thing you know and i think that's it's really underestimated in the context of the medical system Mm -hmm. it's severely underestimated so that's why it's so easy to just guys capitalism is evil but believe all science even though it exists in the capitalistic system um we just driven by science science is in a vacuum that's not motivated by money. So we can believe the science always. It's and cool. who's actually the one saying all the, like who's pushing this believe science? It's the fucking capitalist system. Corporations. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's not like it's just this organic <laughs> natural thing that's occurring. And, yeah, and yeah. what's interesting is it's this believe science thing as if it's always like whatever science says right now, set in stone, it's the truth. Yeah. But then we were looking at that article this morning, right? What, what was the headline? It was said like, uh, basically science is redefining motherhood if only science is redefining motherhood if only society, if only society would, let would let it if only society would let it yeah. recent advances in fertility science are helping pave the way toward inclusivity it's time to decouple maternity from womanhood yeah <clears throat> is it not a scientific definition. I'm not. I'm not saying this. This proves that it's correct. I'm just saying, is it not a scientific definition that you are a woman if you are a biological female? Yeah, that's that is a scientific definition. Cameron, you're so 2015, dude. But now it's like, oh, but that's a social construct. Right. Well, okay. So is it science is determining what we say, or is it our like, who's the what is the thing that's not science clearly that is determining what we decouple and what we don't decouple what is that thing because you're saying like believe science right if it's scientific that means it's true but we're now redefining what a woman and a man is but that's not science doing that because all they're saying in here is that because in science we're now able to give women hormones to look like men and then they can get pregnant. And then eventually, like we were talking about earlier, right, Drake, like this incubator stuff they're developing for like incubating babies. So like two gay yeah. dudes could somehow have a baby. I, I don't even know how the baby gets the DNA from both, but whatever, like they don't need a woman involved is the point, right? Right. right. They don't need a woman to birth the baby, I guess. And so right. they're going to have these incubators <laughs> and stuff. And so because science can do the, the, the that, crazy part about that, the crazy part about that is that it's not like the, the argument of old, because I remember, I remember just considering this point for myself, real, even real quick, has it been done yet? Uh, they're, they're like, they're actively doing it at like 20 something weeks, like 20 something weeks of, of pregnancy. They, they realize, oh, no, we can keep a baby alive after 20 weeks. And so, okay, last week, what was interesting, last week, um, Tim Pool had uh, Matt Walsh. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to sneeze at some point. 
do it. Just, make just do it. Okay. There it Get is. it. Live do your it. best yeah. life, Drake. Thanks. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I just needed that encouragement, you know, just every once in a while, I just need a little push over. I'm like a uh, doula for Jesus. <laughs> you're the best. My hype man. Um, <laughs> but okay, so uh, Tim Paul, Matt Walsh, they basically were just like uh, talking about um, the uh, Temple specifically was talking about the difference in vocabulary from the conservatives and the liberals as far as what abortion means. For liberals, abortion is just like um, you don't have the pregnancy anymore, right? You're not pregnant anymore. For conservatives, it's you're killing a a baby, and so. Um, yeah, somebody made this point, uh, another person I was listening to where they said, uh, when you, when you become pregnant, you become a mother. Mm -hmm. And so when you have the abortion, now you're just a mother to a dead child. It's the, <laughs> it doesn't unmother you is the point. It's uh -huh. like, you're not, you are, you are now a mother, like you've become a mother. So right. it's not like you've undone something. You're not going back in time. You're just look, and I understand there can be circumstances where it can make practical sense. I understand that. And part of the problem is people are getting into this emotional realm of like, you're a mother now and you, you become something and it's like turning into this emotional thing. So no one can really talk about the facts of it. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. So, so basically uh, Matt Walsh, I think had, had brought up the argument of, well, why don't these uh, women who don't want to be pregnant anymore, why don't they, instead of terminating the child in the pregnancy, what if they were to deliver that baby at 20 something weeks, it's still the, the first trimester and then the baby's brought up in an incubator. You know, that was a, a suggestion of like, a, you know, hey, th that's a possibility. And it's something that's already being done um, as far as like babies, not necessarily that the women are delivering children at that stage, but that they can, uh, whenever there's a complication, take a child from that stage and raise it or you know grow it in an incubator until it's full term or whatever. Anyway, interesting thing about this all yeah. is it always starts out with, um, you know, this is going to help those underprivileged people or or whatever, like, like paraplegics or something. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like are you really going to take this away from people? Who, like okay for instance and this is not uh, whatever we're gonna get hate for this but whatever um like gay people having children it's like well you're saying they can't adopt they'll, they'll be better at adopting than you know some parents who are on drugs or whatever and, and they had the kids naturally like that's that's not fair it's like yeah no that makes sense but now you're talking about creating a child like going out of your way to yeah artificially it, created in an yeah. incubator and like just grow a child from scratch essentially like that doesn't make sense it's crazy. you know who's gonna breastfeed the child <laughs> you really don't know the long-term effects of this either like being raised out outside of a uterus and it, outside of a mother like how would I that mean, actually affect the psychology but, but at a certain time but that but we do actually know hmm. i mean they don't meaning they have it studied it with science well, but like we yeah. know yeah but we know like what the yeah. long-term it's like and it, the funny thing is people will go yes but what about the people who uh have natural you know birth mothers and all that stuff and then they still you know are abused and all this stuff and it's like we're That's not fucking not christian either. conservatives saying it's just about women having kids we're going all the way and saying yeah you need to re-educate everybody about everything it's not just if if society was just you know, mothers giving birth to their kids naturally, everything is fine. It's like, but we're not, it's like, we're not even going into the actual education direction in society. We're going down this like rabbit hole where it's like, you're not even thinking about, it's not about the kids, it's not about what's best. It's actually just about how do we create a society of consumers where you can just basically click on Amazon and then in 20 weeks, a baby gets delivered at your doorstep, you know, and think about this. What's the next thing? They're going to be like, look, you can rapid grow your baby instead of nine months. You can have it in a month. And if you just feed it this special formula and all this, I mean, they do it with chickens. Yeah. Like I have a chicken right now. It's a Cornish 
that's like four times, well, maybe exaggerating. No, no, it's probably like three times bigger than all the other chickens, the exact same age. Hmm. How come? Because they're like bred to be that way. Like they, they oh. grow very fast. It, it doesn't even have any feathers on its back because it grows so fast. The, be- the tail feathers and stuff can't like grow in time. <laughs> Wait, it looks like wow. a fucking weird monster. Is that, is that for me? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's for Drake. We're going to, we're going to slaughter it when Drake comes. Yay. Maybe. I yeah. just have all the you guys are going over there. It's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Go like, get your next week. And, and I'll have your baby ready. It's in the incubator. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> We can't wait to pick that up. Baby <laughs> chicks, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, and it's like, it's easy for people to go into this. It's just about not having abortions. It's just about just, it's simply about parents having natural births or something. And it's like, those are all, it's like you're investigating each point and saying like, okay, does it make sense to do this? Or just, is this best? So it's about applying the point of what's best in each thing you do. It's not about going on the fucking crusade of we have to stop all abortions. Like you get yeah. lost in that. You know, it's like, yeah. it's all about the right to like, you're murdering a child and yeah, okay. Like I can agree with that. Um, but what about poverty? Generally yeah. speaking, that same person, can you imagine on average, the same person who says you're murdering children and so forth. If you said, well, we need to end poverty. They're going to argue, well, that's, that's, you know, people don't need to be have get handouts and all you, you know it's the same fucking mindset right and right, you're, right. you're talking about communism or something and it's like but you're talking about uh you know this the government allowing people to to, to tell people they can't have abortions how is that not communism that's the government saying you can't do something right right yeah. so how you know where, where do you want to draw the line here you know and so the problem is people have values and not principles Mm. you see what i mean it's like they, they're certain things they place value on and certain things they don't place value on but they're not have a principle of in every point it's always what's best yeah. so there is no values it's not about like life has value right yeah. period yeah you yeah. know that article that we were talking about the one with the i want to look at that with you guys so people have context oh so interesting you know that the afab point <clears throat> turn up your mic or bring it closer or something How's this better? Why is it always oh, like? And, and, why is your we, mic always always like? One second, let me grab it. It's all over here. And by the way, this science is oh. redefining science is redefining motherhood. If only society would let it. This is Wired magazine, and they're publishing it on May eighth. On Mother's Day, wow. meaning it's on purpose. It's yeah. On, yeah. Right. Okay. So um, there's this interesting point as well of. Oh, okay having a, the, the title of like afab or like cisgendered or whatever it's like who comes up with these titles right like who comes up with these way of, of talking about normal fucking people is like did did you did you call yourself cisgendered did, is that how you identify is this something that like you just decided like oh yeah everybody got together all of a sudden it was like cisgendered is a thing. Well, I actually know uh, the theory behind why that term was created. Oh, tell me. Because what the problem think? was we were saying transgender people and then making them seem ab- abnormal. They are. Right. I know. But the point is they're saying, oh, but then it's making them seem abnormal. So then there has to be cisgender. So you're either cisgender or transgender. You're not normal and then transgender. Hmm. But that's the point. That's a fucking social construct. But that's the point, though, is like, okay, you come up with this title cisgender because you don't like the title it's like it's spite essentially like i don't like that you've given me a title so i give you a t- hmm now like now how do you like being called cisgendered like you're, you're gonna have to be called something that you don't want to be called but the reality is like trans is means across you like you went across you trans you you changed <laughs> you transformed right <laughs> You went across it, and everything, form. everything that's used to describe something where someone is emotional about it because they have unresolved points that they're not addressing. Yeah. It becomes a bad word like right. retarded or right. uh, disabled. Like you can't even say disabled anymore, you know, like, or handicapped, uh, handicapped, handicapped like, you know, like, yeah, everything is, it goes to a, there's like a term for this concept. Um, you know, another thing I heard too was, I thought that was pretty interesting was this person was saying, um, they're making this point that this whole trans movement, people are saying society doesn't accept us for who we are. 
right? And um, first of all, when you really look at that, it's the person not accepting themselves for who they are. Yeah, that's really what it is. It, because if you're a, think about this, if you're just saying, I don't want to play into the roles that I feel like I'm pressured into in society because I don't feel comfortable with them. Well, why don't you feel comfortable with them? That's the question. It's like, um, it, okay, it'd be like if, if you and I had a business arrangement, an agreement, like we were, we're building a business together, right? And then you said, well, I don't, like meaning you clearly spelled out, I'm going to do this, you're going to do that. And that's like the thing. It'd be like if you had a CEO and then you had a, uh, an, like a CFO, right? The, the, the finance officer, right? And then the finance officer is like, you know, I just feel like so restricted in this role. I also want to, you know, run the supply or the warehouse or something. And I you're like, but that's not, that's not what you, what your role is. That's not what you're here to do. That's not the agreement. Right. And so when you come into this world and you are physically a woman, but then you're like, I don't like that. I want to be a man. It's like, but you're not, but I want to be a man who gives birth. And, and, and then here's the point. Okay. Let's just say for a moment, we'll play the game. And you could be a man. All right. Now, how are you going to utilize that in order to contribute to this world in a way that's best for all? Is that the starting point? Is it be physically, I'm not, I don't, I'm not comfortable with this. I, I need to become a man or a woman, whatever the opposite is, so that I can do what's best for everybody, including myself. Or is it actually a totally self-interested point that's stemming from a low self-esteem? Think about it. And what's fascinating is that person in the article, which by the way, it's, it's published in Wired. So, and it says the word science in it. So guys, science. This guy's name is Carl and they're a PhD and they're a lecturer at MIT. Hmm. And then it says gave birth to both of his children. And I was like, I was like, okay, let me read this again. Yeah, I read it. And I was like, what? I'm like, confused from, I'm like, Oh, because I didn't really get where it was going at first. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Despite being the one with the baby bump, he was routinely asked to wait outside while the nurses attended to his not pregnant wife. It's like, okay. So is the wife a woman or a man? People were, so people were unable, he says, to see both a man and a pregnant body. As a result, Carl became a, quote, fat man rather than a pregnant person. Despite being assigned a female at birth and possessing a uterus and glands for lactating, Carl was not, in the eyes of even the medical staff, the mother. Motherhood. Whose fault like, is that? Motherhood, <laughs> like gender, is a social <laughs> construct. It exists because humans agree that it exists. Wait, 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 go back. Uh, where does it say that? Uh, it's like two. Yeah. Ah, motherhood, like gender, is a social construct. It exists because humans. Are... Motherhood is a social construct. Yes, Cameron. No, Did listen. You know? They're upset because they're saying, "I'm a mother. How dare you not recognize me as a mother?" And it's like, you, you're saying I can't be a mother. I have a uterus. I have breasts that lactate. I'm like. No one's saying you can't be a mother. We're saying you're not a man. You are pretending to be a man and you're confusing people. Mm -hmm. So you're creating a problem and then saying you're a victim of society. You're trying to present yourself as something you're not. And now you're upset that people aren't just recognizing that you're a mother. Yeah, that's like that, this constant mm -hmm. external validation that, that all trans people seek. It's like, you have to play into my reality whatever I'm thinking in that moment, whether it be like I'm fluid or whatever, like you just have to know and not misgender me. And, and let's be clear, this is not unique to trans people. This is, and see, this is part of the problem. It seems like maybe we're just going against trans people like, oh, if they're just weren't trans people, everything would be fine. It's like, no, everybody participates in this bullshit. It's just, if we continue going down the trans road and accepting it, like, oh yeah, it's totally normal. It's like, we're not stopping at the fundamental starting point and questioning that part. That's the real issue here, right? We're not questioning, where is the parts where we seek external validation for like everything? Like, um, 
like imagine when you're in a social circle and you have to be the one that's cool or you have to be the one that's funny or the one that's introverted or whatever it is. And it's like, people have to accept that about you. And you're constantly acting in a way to continuously reinforce that self-image that you have. I'm, or I'm, yeah, what? I'm, I'm the funny one. I'm the funny one of the group. And then if somebody doesn't laugh at your joke, you have like, you like melt down or something, right? <laughs> It's like, how did this guy come in and he's funnier than me? That's not fair. And trans Some commentators go so far. Treated as pedophiles, non-binary identities. Wait, where are you seeing that? It's like the first paragraph. I, I scroll back up to the first paragraph because it's talking about the, the violence and harm that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That they go through. Uh, Carl considered himself a papa. I don't know why they capitalized the second P in the pa, word papa. Pa. Pa. pa no they're equal it's pa 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 pa, pa, pa. Hello, pa, pa. <laughs> other transgender parents chose more and andro- choose more androgynous terms largely because of the way motherhood has been construed wait okay so it's really important that this person is the the father even though they're the mother so they're upset that the medical staff won't refer to them as the mother even though he's going around telling everybody he's a papa <clears throat> He's like, I'm the father. And they're like, okay, so uh, clearly your wife is not eight, 10 months or, you know, seven months pregnant. And you're very largely, uh, obviously obese as a man, uh, yeah, or at least in your stomach area. It's very weird, but yeah. you're the father? Yes. Okay, ma'am, would you like to come in for the examination? And they're like, can't you see I'm the pregnant one here? And you're like, excuse me, wait, what's happening here? <laughs> who's, the, who's the mother? Okay. The woman raises her hand and, and you're the father, right? And you're like, yes. So come with us, ma'am. And the guy's like, I have breasts. I have a uterus. I have a baby inside of me. I can be a mother too. Oh, so you're the mother. I'm the father. You're like, I don't know what to do right now. Like what, what is the fucking logic here? Right. And this says at best, Unconventional pregnant parents cause total gender confusion, even among medical practitioners. But at worst, it results in trauma, violence, and harm. In trans for the, for men, the, for the medical practitioners, no, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. For in failing to get emergency care during miscarriages, in trans women being treated as pedophiles, and in non-binary non-binary identities being entirely erased, they're using the language of genocide. Hmm. Wow. Identities being erased. Yeah. Here's the here's what I find really interesting about this. I was just talking to somebody about this yesterday. My barber. I was just talking to my barber, and uh, we were talking about specifically like because as I was bringing these things up to him, because he's kind of on the like. There's a lot of bullshit that goes on in the media. You know, he's he's open about that, but then. Um, we got on the topic of cricket burgers somehow and he's like what is that i was like oh you don't know about these cricket burgers like wait do you know about the great reset and he's like no tell me more about that and like we, we're talking more and more and more and he's like how do people fall for this i don't get it right and what it made me realize or like brought more to my awareness was they're not doing this to target you and me as adults they're doing this to target the children. Like, I, I, and I remember hearing something on the radio as a kid and, and thinking like that that was normal. It was like some, like some radio conversation on the hip hop station. And they were talking about like, oh, it, they were talking about like um, something sexual. Like, I don't know if radio still does this, but like, they have like conversations that are explicitly sexual. Um, and I was a kid and I was listening to this and I remember it. And the, the acts that they were talking about sounded like, oh, that's what adults do. That's what adults do in, in sexual relations. And it wasn't until I was older that I realized like, that's kind of weird to have hear anybody even talking about that, you know? <laughs> but what it does is it, like if you're a young child, like it influences it influences you to think like, 
oh, I, I, sh I should be open to doing this or that or whatever. And especially like, just to make it more clear, like what's going on in the schools, right? Of, of kids being told, you don't know what gender you are. It, like, as if that's totally normal. As if that's totally normal to be confused about your gender. And, and being told things that are just, like, I feel like the people who, who, well, some of the people at least who are sharing this, they think they're being open-minded, right? Um, but what they're actually doing is creating a lot of confusion and creating, they're doing the work of creating a class of people who are complete fucking idiots to the point where they would not be able to, well, people can't think for themselves now, but like they wouldn't be able to even have the thought that would push them to question things. You, you know, you ever, okay. Cause I know you guys have like played games with kids, right? Like little kids. You ever notice sometimes when you play games with little kids that. I don't play games with kids. Well, not emotional games. Okay. But what I mean is, um, no, I have a rule against playing games with kids. I've seen you play games with kids, Drake. Don't play games with me. <laughs> Stop playing. I did not know that you identified as a kid. <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> I'm identifying as a black woman now. Stop playing. <laughs> um, like, you'll notice, you notice how sometimes when you play games with kids, you know what the rules of the game are. And you can even explain it to the kids, but they'll get focused on some other aspect of the game. Like, like we, like when we were like starting to play games with our kids, it's like, there was this game we played called trash pandas <laughs> where it's like, you have these cards and there's different characters and you're basically trying to, the idea is you're trying to collect certain amounts of these cards. So at the end who it's like, you get certain points for the different cards you have and whoever has the most points wins, but there's some cards that are like, they're different animals. Like one is a kitty. It's called Kite. You know, it's like using funny names like Trash Panda and little funny names like that. And the kids, like there's one part where if you try to steal another person's card, if you have a, uh, a doggo, it's like you can block them from stealing. So our kids, they got super focused on just trying to get the doggos and like waiting for the person to try to steal. And they would only want to like roll the dice to get the ability to steal so they could try to like block each other. They didn't even care about the points like initially when we played. They were just focused on that. Okay. So imagine you're playing Monopoly with somebody and you get them emotionally focused on, it's just about um, getting into jail and getting out of jail. So like, they're just thinking about that while they're going around and you're like buying a boardwalk, you know, park place or whatever the things are, you know, you're like putting all the houses and they, you know, you're doing all that and you're like accumulating all this power in the game while they're all distracted emotionally on this thing that really doesn't, in terms of the way the game is constructed, they're going to fucking lose. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm seeing is, is the point of this. It's, it's like, it's not about attacking trans people. It's just recognizing it's a fucking mental illness. It's a mental disorder. It's, it's, it's a consequence of things not being directed properly. This morning mm -hmm. we were talking with Max because Katie showed me this article and I was reading it in another room. I came into the room and I was like, man, and I started talking about it. Just, she already knew what I was talking about. And Max was sitting there like, what are you guys talking about? Because he always asks us, like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? So I explained to him the context of people. Right, there's a train. The train. By. the train. That's hilarious. I explained to him the context of, you know, what transgender people are, and the point of people. And I told him the context of this article of this person who is born a woman, but wants to be a man. So they take chemicals and they do certain things to their appearance to make them appear as a man and then they believe that they're a man and they expect other people to say that they're a man but then they're also pregnant right and i was asking him like does it make sense and he was trying to and, and i'm like i was like okay like imagine max i had an electronic circuit and i had an led and i said which one does the uh does the neg or does the positive part go into and he said the negative one or whatever it was and i said okay but imagine i said i have an led and i say that the positive goes to the positive and he was like, <laughs> he was like, you can't, no, 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 you can't, you, that's not, that's not, you can't do that. And I said, yeah, but, but I believe it is. And he's like, you're funny, Cameron, you can't do that. No. And I was like, but I want to believe that. And I'm upset that you, and he's like, and I was like, what would you do for that person? He was like, well, 
he's like, maybe you could just make them so angry that they would just stop pretending. He was like trying to come up with how do you get that person to stop, right? And so we were talking about it and I was like, you know, imagine that there's a person who's like, looks like it is a woman, but they want to pretend to be a man. And, and, and I, but then I'm like, I want to have, I want to have a baby and I want you to say I'm a man. Okay. I'm a man. It's what I, and I was like doing this whole thing. And Max was like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. He could see very clearly. And I said, Max, and he said, you know, it's, he said, but it's interesting. He said, when, um, when we're playing games, oh, cause I brought up the point. I said, you know how when you always like to generally you play like when you play characters that you're reading about sometimes you like to be like queen astral or the white witch or like and he's like yeah he's like and right now like they're reading charlotte's web together and he said um i like to be charlotte and and, and katie made this point she goes yeah it just happens to be a lot of the stuff we read the main character is a female that's also part of it and it's like so of course the kid wants to be the main character and he was like yeah i like to be a lot of the female characters and i was like okay does that make you a girl? And he said, no. And I said, well, what are you? He said, I'm a boy. And I said, okay. So it's, it's pretty obvious. He can understand the difference. And we've also explained to him, what is the difference? I said, what is the difference? Right. And I said, I said, um, you know, uh, I said, I'm a man, right. Because I have a penis. I said, what is Katie? He said, a woman. I said, does she have a penis? He's like, nope. I said, Katie, you have a penis. She was like, nope. Right. And he's like laughing. Right. And so it's like, why can't you have that discussion with your child? And they're saying that if you do that, that's a social construct. Okay, but where do you draw the line? Let's, if you go outside and you're like, there's an apple tree. Well, no, we just call it an apple tree. It's not actually an apple tree, but it produces apples. So th this is my question <clears throat> because I was reading how motherhood is a, well, just in the same article, right? I'll, I'll give you guys the context who are listening. Motherhood, like gender, is a social construct. It exists. I don't know why this is in quotes. I guess because it goes to another article. Oh, it exists yeah, because human that. agree. Humans agree that it exists. End quote. Um, we create constructs as a means of ordering the world and attempting to control it. <laughs> they are useful for organizing our thoughts. They become extremely dangerous <laughs> when we mistake them for reality. So why wouldn't you apply that same thinking to calling people? transgender trans man trans isn't that like you're it's just a construct that you're trying to control the world with and you should it's really extremely dangerous when you mistake them for reality like how, how there's they're, what they're saying is a word is a construct so if you put a yes. word to something and you name something therefore it's you trying to control and organize your thoughts and it can be really dangerous if it doesn't align with reality so what you're saying is yeah. the defining factor is does it align with reality but, but what where Please is the underlying point against them <laughs> hold on but but here's but there's there's a deeper point though it's like they're saying it doesn't align with uh we mistake them for reality but to the mind to the ego what is reality hmm. whatever you feel exactly and that's the problem is they're saying we have attempt that they're, they're they're claiming that in and this is true to a certain degree, like forcing a woman to be a mother because, okay, let me, let me change it. You have a girl, she's born, she's a girl, she grows up. And then you tell her your only value, the only thing you can do, you have to find a husband and get pregnant and have a child and have babies. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. Explaining to her the value of it letting them understand and see examples of how you can give to the world by raising children and being that the mother and being the unconditional love that the child needs in the, especially in the beginning of their life is a different thing. You see the difference? It's like, am I suggesting we just take every girl and we force them like, you're going to be a mother and I don't care what you say about it. Like, this is your role. You, be, you know, fit into society. Like that doesn't make sense either. That's not how we treat our children. <laughs> You see, like, it's like, for example, Katie is not, okay, why is Katie uh, what would be considered a traditional stay-at-home mother? Is it because I've forced her to do that? Like, if you know anything about our relationship, neither one of us is forcing the other person to do anything. I didn't really want to go to that slaughtering thing with the chickens the other day, because I'm like, they said it was from like 8.30 to 2.30, and I'm like, 
I could just fucking watch a YouTube video for 20 minutes and learn all that stuff. I don't need to fucking go for six hours or whatever it is. And like, that's going to be a lot of my day. I have other things I want to do, but she kept selling me. She was like, well, look, if I could, I would go. And I really would like you to go. Cause I think it'll be a really good experience. You can ask him a lot of questions. She was like selling me on it. And at the end of it, I was like, I'm just resisting emotionally because I think I have better things to do, but everything she's saying is valid. It actually makes sense. And she's like, you're going to be glad when you go and everything. And, and I knew, okay, if I just go, like I will enjoy it. And I'll always make the best out of any situation I'm in. Right. So, so and then I went, and by the time I made the decision, I'm like, I'm not going to resist it. Right. So then I was like, happy to go, but I had to, she supported me by selling me on it. And she wasn't like, if you don't go, I'm going to, you know, not have sex with you, or I'm going to, you know, not make you good dinners or she didn't manipulate me in a negative way. She just kept selling me on why it makes sense to do it. Right? And go. I supported myself with, I got to let go of all my emotional resistances. And when I do that, does it make sense to go? Yes, it does. And then I did it. So the problem is it, it said, like you just pointed out as in that article, we do it to control the world. That's what they're saying. It's about control. Everything's about control. It's like, they're either control or absolute consequence free freedom. Unrestricted, no limits. It's like, no, there's having principles, evaluating things and deciding what is best and then acting according to that. So with your children, it's not about imposing that they're a boy or a girl on them. It's about helping them understand what they physically are. And everything else is a mental construct. And if you were to embrace what a child physically is, like here's the perfect proof of it. Can a woman do anything? What does the what does society say? A woman can do everything. Can a man do anything? What would society say? No. Like are, are women problematic? No. Are men? Yes. And so, and that's 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 self honestly how people would answer mm -hmm. in society today, mm -hmm. right? If you ask them, if you just said like you could watch, go on the videos, you'll see people doing it in interviews. You know, would you say there's some problems with men these days? Like, are men are men problematic? And they would go into all these things. Say, what about women? Well, I mean, you know, every woman is different, and you know, like some, you know, like they'll suddenly change the way. It won't just be like a yes, definite, clear cut. So when you look at all of this, what I see the major problem is number one we're starting to argue about the validity of people's existence and their right to express themselves. That's the wrong conversation because no one's taking responsibility for how was this person raised as from the beginning as a child? What was their education? It was parents that essentially neglected them. It was parents that all they did basically was take care of the bare minimum. And then everything else that they, that they would fall under, that would fall under the category of parenting was literally just brainwashing them whether it was religion or whether it was transgender stuff or whether it was whatever it was, it doesn't matter. If it was fucking Christmas, birthdays, Easter, Tooth Fairy, Disney shows, fucking Paw Patrol, whatever the fuck, all of that shit is fucking brainwashing the kid, not directing things. Like uh, right now the kids are watching Charlotte's Web, right? They're watching the TV show because they read the book. They're watching the little cartoon from the 70s, right? And as they're watching it, Katie's sitting there and they're like, what's going on right now? Because they're doing some part where she's making the web and Kitty's like, yes, can you, do you see how the music is trying to create sort of an emotional drama around her? And she's like explaining things as they're watching it, right? What parent is doing that? They're just like, watch the show. Here you go. Okay. It's just entertainment. It doesn't have any effect. It has a fucking effect. And that doesn't mean we're just going to let our kids watch anything as long as we explain it. Like we're very specific and it's like certain things, right? And the problem is not you just control the child. The, pro the, the, the responsibility of the parent is to explain, to nurture them, to develop them, to build their vocabulary. So it's like, as the kids are watching, they can say like, oh yeah, I can see how Fern is being very emotional about the pig right now. Like she thinks that pig is special because the dad's about to go kill it because it was a run. But no, we need to save this pig. But what's interesting is, like three sentences before, what, did, what were they having for breakfast? And the kids will say, oh, they were having, um, you know, it said like whatever uh, you could smell in the air, the smell of the bacon. Hmm. I'm like, so they killed that pig. Why didn't Fern get upset about that pig? 
She's, uh, she's, she, it, what is this story impulsing? It's impulsing the point of being small and weak and needing someone else to protect you and always ha- being at the victim and the mercy of other people. Like, what is this? And so we're talking about that with our kids, hmm. three and five. So they understand and they start to see for themselves how you can, there's, there's layers beneath stories that are programming like certain concepts and ideas, right? So it becomes part of their education to be able to see those things. And they had the vocabulary to understand it. If they didn't, we wouldn't be watching it because we would know they would only be able to be able to explain. Mm. And so that's a level of responsibility that we're, we're, what we're, what Katie and I, our whole goal within everything we've done is to set another, a new standard for parenting to show people like there's another standard. And so with this whole trans thing, and it's not just the trans thing, it's lots of other areas. It's always just, you're, you're arguing about consequences. And then it's like, it's like, imagine if I went into your house and I just started beating everybody up. And then I, and then I got upset with you, Asif, because I'm like, you're not taking care of all these people. You need to be, you need to help all these people that are in your house that are all beaten up. You need to spend all your time helping these people. And meanwhile, while you're doing that, I'm just beating up more people. And then I make you feel bad for not taking care of those people. And it's like, and then I'm the person who's beating these people up and then also making you feel bad for not helping these people. And then if you're like, hold on, but first of all, I think really you should stop beating these people up. Oh, you're, you're phobic. You're phobic against these people that are being beaten up. I'm like, what? You're trying to erase their identities. And I'm like, I'm not trying to erase those people's identities. I'm saying, let's stop the thing that's creating this consequence that we're constantly having to deal with. There's a lot of effort being done to re-engineer our language to yes. include people that have been created through ineffective parenting and manipulative education and brainwashing and, and, and mass marketing and so forth. So we can't get lost in the point of this is this very feminine thing of like, it does, feminine doesn't mean bad. It's just, it's an overemphasis on the feminine of we just need to include all these people and help them and not judge them. It's like, I'm not saying you need to put the transgender person and laugh at them and make fun of them. But if they're going to sit there and complain and, and say that everyone's being bigoted, like they're the ones fucking doing the judging. Right. And say like, oh, if you don't accept me as a man, even though I'm a woman and I'm upset because you're not treating me like a mother, even though mother's a social construct. But what's interesting is where's the social construct in this person being a mother? Isn't it literally they have a physical uterus? Right. That's not a social construct. Right. Right. And it's fascinating because when you look at that, you know, that, that thing you were saying that was in quotes as if it says, Motherhood, like gender, is a social construct. It exists because humans agree that it exists. I clicked that article. It's an yeah. article from Very Well Mind. Why social constructs are created. And, and I went down and looked. I was reading it, and it says, this is fascinating. It, it's like it spells it out. A social construct is something that exists not in objective reality, but as a result of human interaction. It exists because humans exi- uh, agree that it exists. Yeah. But then it says some examples of social constructs are countries and money. Money would also not exist without human interaction. If we think about objective reality, we might think that the money does exist. After all, we can touch the paper or the coins. However, unless humans agree on what the paper or the coins represent and can be used for, the paper money is just paper and the coins are just metal disks. And if you go back to the other article, the one that we were originally talking about, if you scroll down to where you see the picture where it says subscribe and there's like a weird W thing, it says today's gender biased assumptions about motherhood have largely been largely inherited from the rise of the middle class. Among the poorer classes, men, women, and sometimes children work to sustain the family. Among wealthy or aristocratic women, nurses and governesses frequently took on the childcare. But affluent 19th century families who could afford leisure needed to only have one parent leave the house for work. And it became a mark of pride if a man could keep his wife at home. Like, think about that. It's a mark of pride if I can keep my wife at home. <laughs> no, what? Let me, let me reverse that for a second. It's a mark of pride if I can earn so much fucking money that I'm able to give my wife the opportunity to do the very best job of raising the children that she gave birth to. Mm-hmm. Why is it to keep her at home? I don't care if Katie leaves the house. <laughs> I'm, I'm the one who's always at home now. But if she was like, if she was like, um, 
you know, I, I need to go out and make some extra money. I'd be like, what? How much money could you possibly make that would, have, that would, that would even make a dent in what I can do? And so now part of the problem is look at the article. Let's see, go back. Where was the, it said, oh no, okay, no, it was actually one of the other ones that they quoted. Let me find it. Uh, where was it? The social role for women as a recent invention. Let me see if that is, it looks like I clicked it. Now that's a JSTOR article. It might have been the other one Katie sent me. Let me check my phone or my, my messages real quick because there was one she sent me, which was, let me see if I can find it. I don't see, oh, maybe it's on Messenger. Oh yeah, it's on Messenger. Uh, ah, millennial women want 1950s housewives. Here, I'll send you guys this link. Put it in the chat. You can post this one too if you want. See God. Millennial men want 1950s housewives after they have kids. And it says the ambition of millennial women has long been lauded or lauded from their girl power childhoods to their PhDs. Women are now the backbone of the workforce. This is interesting. In 2018, 74 men earned bachelor degrees for every 100 women. Some 60. Some 64% of women are now breadwinners or equal earners in their households. And no wonder they've grown up being told that women are able to do and be anything. Until they become mothers. Until they become mothers. <laughs> That's hilarious. How do you become a mother? It's a social construct. You would just identify as it. At that point, many of their partners apparently expect them to turn into June Cleaver on Leave it to Beaver. And there's some book... It explores how working mothers get tasked with a second shift, i.e. all the domestic and family work that occurs after paid work ends for the day. So here's the problem. Again, see the problem? See the way that it's constructed? We've convinced women to go and become the breadwinners. And then now we expect them to do the job and the motherhood? It's like you've, you, us, we, our world, our society, what we've accepted and allowed for generations has programmed men to be weak, and women to be strong. And yes, you can artificially do that. Now the women, the men have no fucking balls. They don't make any money. The the, the men are uh, the women are are earning more. And they're choosing men who are fucking beta males who don't earn more than them. And there's not even a lot to begin with, as it's showing. And then, oh, and then the rise of porn. So men don't even have to fucking be in relationships. So men are fucking weak as hell. And then we've got a situation where now the women are getting pregnant, they're having a kid, and now they're upset that they have been, that they are expected to do the work and earn all the money and raise the kids. A man? Okay, let me ask you a question, guys. Let's just speak as society for me. Can a woman do anything better than a man? Can a woman do yes. anything better than a man? Yeah. That's the, that's the answer, right? Yes. A woman yes. can do anything better than a man, right? Can they raise children better than a man? Yeah. That would be the one area I would say most definitely women can definitely do things better than men. Yeah. It's it, you're, you're structured differently. Now, obviously if you're retarded and you're programmed incorrectly and you're having all these stupid ideas that don't make any sense, you're not going to raise effective children. But has men historically been raising the children? No. So who's make all, who's who's raised all these retarded men? Hmm. That doesn't mean women are bad at raising children. It's just that they're not treating it as the best they could possibly do. So now we have all these women who are upset, and and it's funny because then if you say, well, but the woman should just stay home and not be the not earn the money, they're like, how dare you enslave the woman? It's like but you're saying you want to enslave the man. What do you want? What do you, what you want what to do? Do? <laughs> do you want to have kids or not? Do you want the best children? Do you want them to be effective? Even among childhood, child, or sorry, even among households where partners initially split chores equally, childcare ends up falling to the mothers. 75% of moms are the ones who assume responsibility for appointments like children's checkups. They are also four times more likely than their partners to miss work to take care of sick children. 
that should be an indicator. Why is it fault? Okay, but let me ask you a question. What do you guys think is the criticism that's being leveled here as to why it's falling to the women? That the women have more work to do now. But, but why does it fall to them? Because the men continue doing their job and then the women, they get pregnant. They can't continue working and be pregnant. You're right. But what I'm saying is, isn't it obviously implying that the men are like, you go do all of it. You do that. You take care of the kids. Like they're sitting at home and they don't really want to do all that work. Sure. No, look at it. Isn't that what it's implying? Why is it falling to the woman to do it? Yeah, what is I the guess. article saying is the problem in this situation? Like the woman takes on the responsibility because but why? Yeah. Because she, um, she's the stronger person. She's, she's going to listen. Take in other words, putting yeah. in long hours at the office doesn't mean your husband is necessarily going to pick up the slack and wash out the baby bottles. Women are exhausted and many of their partners just aren't helping. Yeah. One mother in the book, even though she out earned her husband, she was still responsible for quote, anything related to schoolwork, doctors, appointments, my child's IEP plan. My husband didn't make any effort to understand it. Professional wor working mothers who find themselves with partners who are unwilling to make that shift in perspective and allocation of time and resources have a tough choice. Radically compromise who they are and what they want to stay in the marriage or leave. Plenty of women opt for the latter. Some study shows that women initiate 69% of divorces and among college educated women, it is 90%. Wow. Think about that. 90% of, of divorces where there's a college-educated woman involved, it's initiated by the college-educated woman. Why prioritizing your career is good for your kids. Wow. And then they talk about how these, and then the, the whole, the, listen, here's the whole point of the article. Uh, Brigan Jane, that's, I guess, a woman, initially tried to tell herself that she was okay with traditional gender roles. However, she found that her contributions around the home were never fully valued. Her husband gave people the impression that she was his spoiled wife. She divorced him, started flipping homes, and became an HGTV host who helps rebuild homes for families in need. Yeah. Her kids could not be more excited about her work. Another woman she spoke to spotted the problem early on when her fiance told her she would have to lower her ambitions if they were going to have children. She broke off the engagement instead. She ex and then the author herself experienced the choice and she is also a lawyer. She, following the birth of their children, her husband hoped she would stop chasing after bigger, harder projects so that I could be more present. She felt certain her children would understand her need for fulfilling work and would benefit by knowing that mom is out there making the world a better place. She had a great point. Studies show that children of working mothers are just as well adjusted and have no more behavioral problems than their other retarded peers. Oh, whoops, they didn't say retarded. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's just really clear that it's all about how you feel within the relationship. Look, here, do you see, scroll down. The book is called Ambitious Like a Mother. Why prioritizing <laughs> your career is good for your kids. Oh my God. Her husband didn't understand the couple divorced, not an easy solution, but working mothers who get divorced report that they are happier. She found that sharing custody of her children creates protected time pockets where I can be productive. Okay, let me ask you a question. How did it solve the problem? Of who, who's taking care of the kids? Yeah. It didn't. It, well, what it did was it forced the father to have the kids on the weekends or whatever these are the protected time pockets that they're talking about but what about during the day for... doing the dishes for the kids doing their homework a doctor's appointments she's probably still doing that shit. How, how does it solve the problem all that happened is it says she's happier right yeah it doesn't solve any problem for the kids and, and, and how is she defining her happiness just based off of like how she feels her work think about it Be is, is we all we know this we've watched century of the self we understand the point we remember our first second episode was happiness versus principles, principles versus what was when we yes. don't have principles versus feeling. 
Yeah, but there was one we did early on about oh the pursuit well. of happiness. Yeah, and it's like if you're programmed to feel happy when a buzzer goes off, and unhappy when it doesn't, guess what's going to happen if the buzzer doesn't go off? You're gonna. And then if suddenly you get into a situation where the buzzer could just go off, you're going to feel happier. You've yeah. been programmed to feel a certain way about a certain stimulus. So women have been programmed to feel happy about yeah. having a career and to get self in, intrinsic self-value and self-worth from that. It's a, it's become a part of their self-esteem and they've been told it's just like with the kids that go in for the transgender stuff or the uh, like Asif was talking, I know he had to go get another meeting. Um, he was talking about uh with the pregnancy stuff, you know, you go to the doctor and they're like, Hey, if you don't get this thing or whatever, your child could die. And the women are like, Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. It's super easy to manipulate based on that. Yeah. So it's like, if you don't give this to your child, they're going to die. If you do, you'll be happy. If it's, if you take away the woman's uh, career, they're going to be unhappy because they've been programmed to be happy towards that particular thing. They've been told if you don't do this, you're a piece of shit. You're a slave. Imagine you're programming people to think that if they do certain things, they're a slave. That's not choice. Yeah. That's not empowering women. That's not giving them choice. You've programmed them to, to tie their self-worth to what? To having a job, to being a slave. And how is that not a social fucking construct? Right. Like right. they're not questioning the actual social constructs behind their points, which are making them question social constructs. Yeah. The social I mean, construct is money. The in value that we place on it is not equal for all. So we have a competitive system that's survival based. And then we, because of that, think about it. What do the people who benefit the most from the money system want? To keep their money. They want to keep their money. They, they want, to, they want a bunch of slaves. They want a bunch yeah. of people paying taxes. Yeah. And they don't want any questions. And they don't ever want that threatened. They want that perpetual money making machine all the time. Yeah. That's how it works. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So when you realize, hey, I could double my workforce and pay them half, how do you, what, why do I say pay them half? Because you get another person into the workforce and they pay half of their money in taxes. Yeah. So you're, st- you're getting half the money right there. Yeah. And is it easier to control the men or the women? The women. It's much easier to control them because all you have to do is be like, oh, but you could die. Someone could die if you do this. Right. Don't do that. Yeah. Right. Like think about all the companies that are going woke. It's like, but if we don't put out this messaging, all these transgender people are going to kill themselves. That's the underlying point behind it. Yeah. But it's so silly because it's like, it's not looking at the consequence of people are dying every day for much simpler things because of the same money system. Yeah. That they are daily participating in and not questioning. Yeah. Like if they had said in that article, the woman uh, went to work for a C as the CEO of a major, you know, defense contractor and the first woman to be the CEO of Lockheed Martin. Yeah. They'd be like, Ooh, yeah. Right. And yeah. it's like, they're literally fucking making missiles and jets yeah. and bombs and shit, you know, like, right, right, right. They wouldn't it, care. They would not care. It, it's just like, obviously the, we know the solution, you know, obviously it's clear the point is you're going to have slaves if you're not educated. If, if someone's uneducated, that creates slavery. That's and, but, hold on, but look at the problem, though. How has education been redefined? Yeah, well, education has just been only about learning what's in school, whether that be two plus two is five now or that. Boys but but even more importantly, education equals you have a PhD. Hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Like a woman is not educated unless she has a PhD. Sure. But that woman can't do shit. They, I mean, yeah. They, yeah. what do they know? Yeah. Okay, they have a PhD. Cool. What can you do? They're a professional student. They, they go to school for however many years and they go get a job based on the PhD. Yeah. Not because they know anything. Yeah. And this applies to men too. They go get PhDs, they don't know anything. Yeah. That's not education. That's just, you went through a system that at the end of it, it's like these people who go to like 12 years of karate and at the end you get a black belt, but they don't actually know karate. Right. right. They just kind of know it like better than I do, but they just memorized a bunch of stuff and they're not actually at that level. Yeah, but it's yeah, like, yeah. you have to give them the black belt at the end. Otherwise people wouldn't pay for it. 
Same fucking thing. Just because yep. you have a PhD doesn't fucking mean anything. You wrote a paper yeah. and you had to come up with something. Yeah. So like, well, I'm going to do it on this. And then you also inject all of your own ideas and personal opinions into it. And, and it's fucking meaningless. Yeah. That's, that's funny. Cause like I, there's, there's definitely certain martial arts where you just go through it, it you put in the time and you're a black belt. And then there's oh, yeah, they have like arts. black belt factories. I think like a whole criticism of like a lot of that. Yeah. And, and, but then there's other things like, no, you have to earn it. Like you're, you're not called a black belt unless you can kick a black belt's ass. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sure there's, there's, there's places you can go where they hold to the highest standard. Yeah. Right. But if, if there were universities like that, most people wouldn't graduate. Oh, for sure not. Cause their vocabulary wouldn't be a, a high enough for them to actually be effective within the point. Already though, most universities like most people don't graduate when they go into university. It's already oh, yeah. the case, you know, it's, yeah. already, it's already the case. Like only 33% of like just the population even goes to university, something like that, something like that. And so, and of those that do go to university, not obviously not everybody graduates. And, and look too at how over time, probably since like, the, I guess probably around the eighties, I'm assuming the universities have become more and more like hostile to men. Mm. where it's like become more and more like feminine focused yeah like you know where it's all about inclusivity and like don't rape women and like you know all this I mean, obviously don't rape women but <laughs> but making women. it making it a, an environment where it's like you're a man you're probably raping stop you know what yeah. i mean like that's the kind of general attitude of it and it's yeah. like if a woman says she was raped she was raped believe her yeah yeah believe yeah, 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 yeah. Right? believe it it's like even though there's no responsibility on that person's part they're just lying in most cases most in some cases right sure yeah just lying yeah um so of course you're going to have more women graduating from the universe of course more imagine you can design society you can engineer it you can influence it and so you're manipulating a situation where you have more women coming out of that and so yeah. what choice do people companies have except to hire those women like look women are earning more and now you're expecting them to stay home too like this is not fair and you're like yeah first off that first way. off wait a minute first off though first off it wasn't it the whole game for women to earn more like wasn't that the whole thing just like oh you know women earn 70 percent less than men and, and which was a lie from the outset and now it's like well they clearly earn more than men and they, isn't what is it women can have it all <laughs> yeah and i guess that doesn't mean they do it all <laughs> no no they can have it all but except be a mother like or, or, or be a mother that stays at home. That's really effective at it. That we don't want that. And what are they actually implying? They're saying, they're saying the women are earning more. So the men should be the ones that stay at home. Right. But that's, and not, if they're not saying that, then what they're saying is the women and the men should split it 50, 50 because both are working. Yeah. But 50, 50 of two people working is not the child has someone full time. Right. It's right. still not when it's 50, 50 of a few hours a day where you had to like, deal with the kids that you decided to have for the, no reason. The children are the ones who suffer. Because and it's never that. discussed. And in right. fact, what's interesting is in that point, they did discuss it, but they just claimed that studies show children are happier when their mothers, what did it say? Uh, Do you remember that, that um, Katie posted right. this video actually of like they were doing a, basically a study on children when they've been neglected emotionally neglected oh yeah I, I actually didn't watch that i feel like i'd seen it before but can you describe it yeah 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 so basically they took a few kids they, they were toddlers like maybe one or two years old um and they set some blocks up in front of them and they were just observing their behaviors and the kids that had you know grown up with their own parents or whatever they immediately just like they went to work on the blocks they were just having fun could oh, care less this, yeah they could care less about the people around them. Like they were, they were completely focused on what it was that they were doing. And then they took kids who uh, their parents had abandoned them or they were emotionally abused. They were put uh, in some sort of uh, institution. They were institutionalized and they would set the blocks up in front of them. And the kids would just, they would just look around at the people in the room because they had a severe mistrust of other people. So they were not interested in playing at all. They were just like, what's, what's going on? Why? What do you think my kids would do? With your kids? 
Your kids would want to read. They'd ask for a book. <laughs> Can I get a book? Max would probably start selling everybody techno tutors. <laughs> and they'd probably start dancing and stuff. You know, like, yeah. They're not gonna freak out like we're because we're not in their room. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, what's interesting though is like when you do those studies, it's like they try to do this one little tiny thing of like, let's see what happens if we do this. But it's like, but then what's the problem is what about all the kids that are in school? Mm-hmm. That's considered normal. Yeah. So it's like in this one little scenario where the parent leaves the room or something, what happens? But it's like, what about in the larger sense? So you, but the problem is the the effects of that you can't really measure because it's so large. But but here's the 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 other thing. It wasn't just like, okay, that that point aside, it wasn't just the parents leaving the room. It's more the idea of like, okay, yeah, you put a bunch of kids in a school for eight hours a day, every day. That's what they know. Like that's literally a job for a child that is really, um, it's like the child is being abandoned. Like that's, yeah. and, and then imagine how much pressure. So, I, so many parents put a lot of pressure on their kids to get good grades when they know it doesn't mean jack shit really like to, to perform well in school. Like who cares, you know? Like what's going to happen to that child most, most of the time is just whatever the parents are doing, the, the child's going to do something very similar in, in that same like kind of bandwidth, you know? And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because that is the abuse that we've all like, well, generally everybody's grown up with. And the, the alternative is like it be, oh well what else am i gonna do i can't stay at home with my kids and, and raise them. like that's weird yeah it's fucking weird you know it, it, it's also like weird if you don't go to school people think yeah. it's weird so it's like it's just as weird and, and so the problem is that the, the mothers are not raising their kids no one's yeah. raising the kids it's just right. putting them in institutions and then they're saying but look we're, m- women who go and pursue their careers uh working mothers are just as well adjusted as anybody else and have no more behavioral problems than their peers. And it's like, it's the same point of putting your embryo, your fetus in an incubator. Even the non-working moms, are they on average staying home with their kids? No. Meaning are the kids in school in most cases? Yes. Clearly. Yes. Clearly. So, yeah. so who are you comparing them to? A bunch of other kids that are also neglected fundamentally. Yeah. And then they use that as the evidence, see? And it's like, okay, but let's look at our society is it actually best? So is any of this work? It's like, you can't just go, well, I mean, you know, I had McDonald's and, you know, I didn't feel any worse than when I had Burger King. So it must be good. Like, that's not, what are you fucking comparing it to? Right. You actually going to tell me that's the same as having a home cooked meal with ingredients you grew organically in your own garden yeah. and animals you raised yourself. And you took the time and the care to do it. You didn't put any preservatives. You're really going to tell me as good as that. And it's like, Oh, who are you? 1950s, leave it to beaver over here. Like, come on, everyone eats fast food every day. Like that's normal. And you're like, you're fucking comparing it to a, to a standard that's already not best. What's the logical conclusion? Because where, where this started out, as far as like, from what I can see is before the Prussian model of school, it was like, you, you were educated at home and basically not very many people were educated. We didn't have the technology that we have today. But, yeah. And, you know, just... <clears throat> you couldn't communicate the same way. And, and so, okay. But then they knew, Hey, if we can just separate children from their parents, get them into the school, we'll have a working class. They already were, were doing that. And now it's like the next step of this is if we can separate them from the uterus and put them in an incubator, we can separate them from like, what is a, a mother and just insert a uterus into a man. That's like, it doesn't make sense, but whatever, fuck it. If we can do this, then there's no fucking, connection there there's right. going to be an, another level of working class what's the logical conclusion well the, the logical conclusion is a child just becomes whatever the system says they need so imagine i mean you've read brave new world that's like a really clear picture where it's like they literally have the children in factories and then they're raised in groups and they're they're brainwashed with like audios yeah uh according to what class they are alpha beta gamma delta you know whatever yeah, they are epsilon, yeah. even like omega yeah epsilon's right and they're literally telling them like alphas are the best you are the best and it's like 
betas are okay, you know, or whatever they are, you know, like you're not right. as good as alphas, but you're not as bad as, Char- as uh, Belgians Charles. or whatever. Yeah, Charlie's. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right? Yeah, um, but, but also like you, you could not be an alpha. You, you would not want to be an alpha. You yeah, want to be a beta. Yeah, you, it, like, beating a beta is the best thing for you. You know, like, it's yeah, like, exactly. and so you can, that, that's where I see the point is headed because the system doesn't want anybody to question anything. It just wants, um, hey, by the way, anybody, if you haven't seen it, watch this movie called Modern Times with Charlie Chaplin. Mm. It's fucking amazing. Like we've watched clips here and there of it. And there's this scene where he's like working on an assembly line and like the guys are all doing their part like in a row. So like he does, he twists these nuts and then like the next, you seen it? I've seen that It's part. so yeah. funny, man. Our, my kid, we watch that with the kids. They love it, man. It's so funny. And like there's this scene where they have the eating machine and everything. It's really good. They like the part where he's like dancing with the oil can and he's like, squirt, <laughs> squirt. And he's like squirting people. And then there's this part where, the, where they're chasing him because they're trying to get him back in line. And like um, they turn off the, the, the conveyor belt so they can chase him and he runs and turns it back on. And as soon as he turns it back on, all the guys run back and start doing their job. And then one of them will be able to turn it off and then they chase him and he turns it back on. They have to go back. And, <laughs> and there's, even a, there's even a scene where Charlie, or this, this mechanic guy gets stuck in this giant, giant machine, but then the whistle blows for lunch. Hmm. And the guy's like, I'm stuck in here. And Charlie's like, it's lunchtime. Yeah. Uh, so he like sits down to like have his lunch and the guy's got his head sticking out of the machine and he's like trying to give him like his lunch. <laughs> and then when the whistle blows, then he gets back to like helping him get out, you know? <laughs> so funny, but it's kind of like that. It's like the system doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Like it's a system. It's literally a computer program. Do you think your computer cares about you? Yeah. You can program a computer to make it seem like it can care by saying the right words to trigger the right emotions in you, but it doesn't actually care. It's just a machine. It's just a, an algorithm. It's a, it's a mathematical equation. Yeah. And there's so much, it's fascinating because all of this discussion boils down to people being manipulated emotionally by machines to not with the end goal of you never taking self-responsibility for directing yourself and directing this world and society as equals in a way that would be best for everybody. And instead we're constantly dealing with the consequences of things and the machine is manipulating us emotionally to focus on deeper and deeper levels of that consequence to the point where we just allow it to totally automate everything for us. You know, and, and so it's funny because you get into this point where it feels like you're arguing with a person, but you're not, mm. you're arguing mm. with a concept Yeah, the concept. that has been programmed into a person and they haven't questioned it. You know, it's like when you're arguing with somebody who's deeply religious, Yeah, you're not arguing with the person. They just, there's like a fear that they're not willing to address. So they've got these like vocabulary essentially developed to protect them from facing that. Yeah. It, it's it's interesting like the whole social construct point like what is a, a construct right like a construct is it's, it's basically something that's constructed right but but we have within us all of these constructs it's where we're constructed of constructs if you will right it's it's what our structure is but what we've constructed within our minds and within our society is i, I want to say not functioning but it, it is it does have a function but it's a, a a a weak construct for the purpose of um life that that's it essentially it's like well, it's, it's like, like, like yeah. creating a bridge and- it's like creating a bridge to get to the other side, but instead of creating an actual bridge to get to the other side of a river, let's say you've created, uh, I don't know, like a fucking, <laughs> you created a diving board. You created a long diving board. It doesn't reach the other side. And you're like, this is what society is about. And you're like, no, but we got to get to the other side. Like this is, you've constructed something, but it's not for the purpose yeah. of life, you know? And, and, Everybody's like, but this is the only thing that's been around for ages or whatever. We have to hold on to this. Like, no, we need to rebuild. We need to rebuild our entire understanding. And it's not in the way, and this is what is happening. This is what is happening, but it's happening on the opposite end of the spectrum where it's like people are uh, rebuilding language, but just to suit 
the next level of their emotions and their mind. And, and, and that's the, the evolution of language to them instead of, instead of what should be happening is reconstructing um, their, their, their vocabulary to understand what is here, what is reality. It's, it's, it's like, it's like going into a video game and realizing this game is like, it can be manipulated. And so then you just manipulate it to be further away from reality, further away from uh, like. The, the, the system that we, ha- that we are participating in, the purpose of it is to manifest our starting point. And so if we, if, if we are a slave, if, in other words, if we've enslaved ourselves to following our feelings and emotions, hmm. then what we manifest outward through technology is something that will continue to enslave us physically. And then the reaction yeah. to that is realizing, oh, I am a slave. But then instead of fixing that starting point, it's like trying to fix the, the technology or whatever. It's not even trying to fix the technology. Point. It's, 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 it's actually doing whatever you can to enslave yourself more because you're like, Hey, this, this isn't making me feel good. I need to focus on my feelings more. I need to change things. Mm. So I get better feelings. And it's like, yeah. Oh, cool. So you're still a slave to your feelings. All right. Let me continue enslaving you. Yeah. You, you, in other words, you're saying I'm a slave. I'm a slave. I'm a slave. And it's like, okay, well, I'm going to make you a slave in every way possible then, because that's what you're saying. You are, you're enslaved to your feelings. You can't question that. You can't direct yourself according to principles. So you're not going to direct reality. So the machine has to just direct reality to feed back your starting point to you. Hmm. So instead of us stopping and saying, what is actually best according to what's physically here? Instead, we're saying everything's a social construct. Yeah. But if you say everything is a social construct, the only thing that that benefits is a machine that the end goal, the end purpose is to trap everybody into a digital world yeah. where literally reality is a social construct. Yeah. Because it, where, what is not a social construct is the question. Because if somebody says, well, motherhood is a social construct. Okay. I want you to define for me then what are not social constructs. Like, give me the examples of all the things that are not social constructs. Before I agree with you, what is? Yeah. Tell me what is not. Because then what would a person have to say? Is an atom a social construct? I mean, according to their definition, yeah. I mean, you could say it is. You could say, well, I mean, you know, it's <laughs> it's the Bohr model or it's this kind of yeah, why, why string theory. You don't actually know. Okay. Yeah. But is there a physical reality? Yeah. Okay. So if there's a physical reality, can you test physical reality? You should be able to, yeah. You can, right? So you can, what is the test? Based on your starting point, you'll manifest something in physical reality that reflects that starting point. So if somebody says, well, this is a social construct, what's the consequence of it? In other words, if you say motherhood is a social construct, what's the consequence? of a mother staying at home with her children and taking responsibility for every aspect of their development and their life, except for bringing in resources, which would be the man's job. Let's say that's the father's role. And the father brings some structure, some discipline to the children and she, he supports the mother. So the mother can always be soft. Does that mean she has to be soft 100% of the time, but in general, she can be the soft approach and the man can be the no. You're going to brush your teeth. Yeah. At the end of the day, even if you agree or not, you're, you are going to brush them. You have to. Here's yeah. why. Like, I'm not going to be like, well, you don't feel like it. Okay. So it's fine for the next month. If you don't brush your teeth, I'm just giving example. It's a simple example, silly example. Right. 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 So the father can bring the, that part of it and the money, the resources and so forth. Right. And obviously our money system is fucked. So that has to change too. Because a father yeah, can't yeah. be a real father and a mother can't be a real mother if the money system is a big game that a few big players play that they manipulate all the time yeah. to fuck over the little guy. Like I was yeah. talking about in that big example, we're talking about the slaughtering and all that stuff, right? So we have to sort that out. And so the problem is you can sit here and argue all day long about transgender motherhood, this and this and that, but you're not changing the starting point of the money, the money system. 
So the real reason why people feel uncomfortable with their roles is not because you're a woman, or you're, you're an AFAB, you were assigned female at birth, but actually you're in your spirit, in your beingness, you are a real, you are a man. But then what is a fucking man? Right. Oh, it's, it's having a beard. Why can't you just be a woman with a beard? No, I am a man. What is a man? Well, it's whatever. It's anyone who identifies as a man. Well, why do you just say it's a woman? What does it fucking matter? Right. It's a word. Like, why it? Why is it that if you're a female at birth, but you like to wear men's clothes, why can't you just be a woman? Right. What? Is, and at, at the end of the day, if you really look like a man, I'm probably going to say I'm, you're a man because right. I don't know. Now, if you're going to tell me I have a vagina, I'm going to be like, okay, you have a mental problem. Right. I mean, maybe I'm going to say that to you, to your face. Maybe I'm not. It just depends. Are you going to be able to handle that? Is it going to be expedient in my reality to just play along with your fantasy because I just need to check out at the grocery store and get home? Right. And is that part of the survival problem is you can't support everybody at all times to really challenge things because then you start screeching. You know, like there's unfortunately compromises that have to be made from time to time. Yeah. But again, what does that go back to? The money system. Survival. That starting point. Yeah. And all we're doing right now, instead of focusing on how do we support the physical survival of everybody and the physical, actual physical safety of everybody, it's actually a focus on the survival of the ego, the survival of feelings. And that's the only legacy that we're leaving our children is that there's going to be a constant reprogramming, re-impulsing and evolving of the mind and the imagination so far outside of reality that at a certain point, it's not going to, it's not going to um, fit with physical reality anymore. Yeah. Like maybe you can make these incubators. And so women who are totally look like men can have babies in an incubator or men can have babies in an incubator or whatever. Okay. But at a certain point, let's just say you're like, I just want to be energy that just floats around in outer space. Well, you can identify all you want and say, everything's a social construct to that, to a certain point. But if you're like, I identify as not breathing oxygen guess what? You're dead. There's going to be a certain point where your imagination is going to conflict with reality. Obviously it's conflicting the whole time. It's just the consequences are not so immediate. If you, if you, if you identify as not breathing oxygen, so you go into an oxygen free chamber, you're going to die pretty much immediately. So that's an immediate consequence because you're dealing with real physical reality at a base level. Yeah. If you're like, I look like a man because I took hormones and then I, um, you know, don't, actually take care of my children. I just put them in school. The effect of that only becomes apparent at a larger scale later on. Yeah. You see what I mean? And especially now we have a system where we put everybody in school, they become specialized and most people don't even become specialized because they can't even pass the tests. And then we have a society based on that. And now the money system is not working properly because it wasn't designed to work for everybody. And now people can't get jobs. Supply chains are fucked. And we're starting to see the consequence of that, but it's so far removed from the actual causes that it's like, oh no, see, it's because of COVID. And that's why we need to lock everything down, even though that only exacerbated the point. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very difficult to say, like, to to show people why the transgender point is actually a symptom of, and a further cause of the problems that are coming. And it, 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 at the very, at the, at the least problematic scenario, it's just a distraction. You know I mean, in the best case scenario, it's just a distraction Yeah, because you're not f- focusing on the physical points, but what it lends itself to is people becoming so fucked in their imaginations and so disconnected from physical reality. They're like, I can't even, um, I can't even exist and function without mental terror in my mind, unless I totally disidentify as a human being. And I just want to be a free floating organism in digital space. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what they're, I just want to be basically playing a video game for my entire life existence. Right. Right. Because that's what people are doing in their mind. They're playing a video game. And, you know, maybe we'll end it in a moment, but I want to add this real, this one point I heard. And this guy says, uh, the actual pronoun for somebody who is non binary, not male or female, it's not they. It's it. It's it. Yeah. So why don't we call people it if they're non binary? Why do we say they? It's dehumanizing. Right. But he made this point. He said, what is dehumanizing? Is saying you're not male or female. Right. 
So you've already agreed with that. You've literally said, I am, I am dehumanizing myself. Right. Now what's the, what's the, what's the fear? What's the argument? Well, if you dehumanize people, they're suddenly going to end up in concentration camps. Right. Yeah. But it's like, not, yeah. China's doing that right now in Shanghai. Yeah. Essentially and, Australia's and doing it. Well, not, it just, not just in Shanghai. They're doing it actually in their Uyghur camps. And they're and like also literally doing it in Shanghai. Yeah. So th- this is just like the next, it's, it's getting to that point where they can just do it however they want. And not to mention, we're just putting kids in school, which are maybe concentration camps is too extreme because they're not like murdering children, obviously in schools, but they're totally constantly subjecting them to abuse, bullying, fear, punishment, like, and the real, the biggest crime within all of it, especially with us having the experience of raising our kids so far is the amount of time and potential that you have wasted Mm. in that child's life yeah because when i look at my kids and i'm like you know max is five years old he'll be six at the end or at the end of october this year and his reading ability his communication ability and then obviously looking at seneca being three and a half where she's at now and what's interesting is this will only be relevant to people who have techno tutor she's already doing level one on her own now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like we were talking this morning and the kids wanted to watch more like of that Charlotte's web. And we said, okay, that's fine. Like we, we discussed the point. Is it best? You know, what are we going to do with it? And then we said, okay, but of course we're going to do our tech computer for certain things first. Right. So Nika was immediately on the computer in there doing her level one on her own. Right. And then I said, oh, you didn't do their mediation. And she's like, oh, okay, do that. She did their mediation. Hmm. Right. And what's interesting is because like with Max, we're like, okay, at a certain point, he'll just go back through level one himself. We're thinking when he's like eight or something. Right. And he's already right. doing it at five. Yeah. But then because he's there and it's that environment where it's already being done, Seneca is now able to do it at yeah. a much younger age. Yeah. 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 Right. So when you see what is possible and then you realize how much of your own life was totally wasted. And it's like, I don't blame my parents from the perspective of it doesn't excuse them in any way. It's just like, it's like if you went and you bought a toaster at Walmart, you bought the cheapest one and you got upset that it like broke down. Right. It's like, you could have got the fucking hundred dollar one that was worked. That would have worked properly. I said, you got the $10 one. I mean, what the fuck did you expect? So it's like with my parents, what do I expect? Like they didn't fucking know. They didn't, there was no option of techno tutor. There was no, they had to work. They had all the emotional problems from their parents who got divorced and all these other issues and abuse and all kinds of stuff. Like, so yeah, yeah. are they to blame? I mean, it's the, what could they have done differently? Is irrelevant. Yeah. That doesn't mean parenting is irrelevant. It's just, what's the point of me continuing to blame them if that makes sense right like oh my problems are because of them it's just my problems are because of them because they did it because they it's like no no okay yes but i'm changing it right you see so yeah it's like when you see if i could have had what my kids have how much because i know how smart i am and i'm like man if i had the vocabulary and the reading ability and everything that max had oh my god i can imagine i can only imagine what I would, I mean, when I was in middle school, I remember like really being fascinated with relativity. Hmm. And I remember my, my best friend at the time, he would, he would always be fascinated by me talking about all the stuff I'd be reading about and stuff. And like, I was, I remember arguing with him or not arguing, but like telling him one time, I think I was in high school actually, or I think it was in middle school or high school. And I was like telling him about relativity and like time dilation. And he was just like, dude, you're just making that up. Like he thought I was just like trying to like fuck with him. And I'm like, no, like I'm reading about this Einstein, like Einstein, like that's actually what he was talking about. And he's like, well, that's, I don't know. That all sounds a little, and it, it does sound crazy. Like it does yeah, sound yeah. totally counterintuitive. So I understand the reaction, but like, I'm just saying my point is like, even back then when I was in middle school, like when I was in sixth grade, I read 1984 for the first time. Right. Mm. But I didn't really get it. Yeah. It's like, I just liked reading science fiction and stuff like that. And it was like, it was a cool story. And like, I, I was fascinated by it, but it was more like a, wow, like what a crazy idea. Cause I had no context for the world. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And I imagine now if Max was eight, nine, 10 reading it and he has more context and him being like, okay, I can see. Yeah. 
what's going on here and you have, and so it's like an empowering thing rather than just entertainment. Right. 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 Cause yeah. a lot of people like think about it when you read it in school, how many people are supposed to read it in school? And then it's like, it has zero effect. I don't think I read it in school, but I, I didn't either, but I know like the non honors class did. Yeah. Okay. So like for like, it was like British the literature or whatever. Honors. What the fuck? Yeah. I, the honors class was reading fucking Scarlet Letter and shit. I don't know what the fuck it was. You know, I think it's American, but whatever. Yeah. We were reading other stuff like fucking King Arthur, or Sir Gowan and the Green Knight and Beowulf and shit. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm just considering like if I had the freedom to be out of school and the structure in my life and the the tools the techno tutor, man, yeah, my life would be very 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 different, very different. But that's why, like, you know, I watched this clip of this guy talking about, you know, in every family that you see that's like super wealthy or whatever super successful in some manner someone in that family at a certain point came along and they had to change everything it wasn't like every family is like born that way somebody along their generations had to change had to make that decision like i'm gonna be the one to fucking do it yeah and they did it and it's like okay so if you see that your family's not you know they they don't have all these advantages guess what it's up to you you get to make the decision. Are you going to be the one to change it for your family, for your future generations? And then everyone in the future in, in your family is going to be like, I appreciate that guy. Yeah. You know? And and really the world is going to appreciate it as well because I mean, what we're, we're doing, what we're doing, not just suggesting, but doing is creating a world that's best. And so, I mean, how do you create that world other than just doing what is best? Exactly. And then supporting other people to see that, and then they can do what is best. It's not about forcing people. You know, like it's funny because the whole idea is even within that article we're reading, it's about how do we just force people to accept another way? How do we control society in a different way? And it's like, it's not about control. If you actually want to support things to be best, like a perfect example is they said in that one that was about the, uh, which one? The millennial men want the 1950s housewives or whatever. Yeah. It used the example that, Oh, where did it go? It said this point about, or maybe it was the other one. One of them anyways, it was saying it was a middle-class invention for the women to stay home. And in, prior to that, it was only the rich people that had the, the women that didn't have to work. Mm-hmm. And they had governesses and, and maids and stuff to take care of the kids. Sure. And it's like, yeah, we're not suggesting any of that. Yeah. You see the difference? It's like, they're, they're, they're trying to argue that, it's just a recent invention that women should stay home and take care of the house. Yeah. And it's only for middle-class people. And they're trying to make it like even the rich people, the women weren't doing all the housework. Come on. And it's like, okay, so who's going to take care of your kids then? Right. Some other, it's not going to be you. Yeah. You're going to do it 50, 50 with your husband. Right. If you're both working, Who's doing it full, who's full-time taking, so all you do is outsource all the different parts for your child, your school, your education, your this, your that, like me and Katie alone, our children never spend any time outside of us. My five-year-old is learning electronics. Like, I'll tell you a funny story real quick. The other day, he, um, he wanted to do something. It was really late at night. And both the kids were awake and it was like 10 30 and I was really tired. And I was like, okay, we're going to go do bedtime now. Right. And they were like wanting to stay up and play. Like they had to go into the big king size bed in our room and like play games under the covers. Like, like, um, last night we were pretending Max was Charlotte and he was like back behind the headboard, like behind the very like gossamer kind of like, uh, drapes that Katie has in there. Sure. And he was like putting his head through, like it was a web. Right. And like Seneca was Wilbur and I was Templeton. And I was like digging through the scraps, looking for pieces of paper of like suggestions for like the words. And what's funny is like in the book, right? Um, they say like she writes some pig in the web. Yeah. Right. So they're like, oh, some pig. So they won't slaughter him. Right. And so as I'm being Templeton, I'm like getting the scraps and I'm like, okay, I'll give him that because everything I was giving him, he was like, nope, that's not good. I'm not going to do that word. And I was like, okay, some pig. And he was like expecting him to be like, yeah, that's the right one. Right. And he was like, hmm, some pig. Nope, that won't work. Because I mean, the Zuckermans, what are they going to think? Like, 
eat some pig right <laughs> and i was like oh i was laughing so hard i'm like that's really he was like trying to find the reason why it would actually make them do the opposite of what we wanted right yeah yeah, yeah. it was so funny and he was like what are they gonna think eat some pig <laughs> um so anyways the other night we were it was kind of late and max wanted to do something and i was like i was trying to explain to him why we were going to go do bed and he was like well look if there's a circuit that flashes red, if there's an LED that flashes red, then you're wrong, Cameron. But if there isn't an LED flashing red, then you're right. And I was like, okay. Then he leaves the room. Five minutes later, he comes back and he goes, come here, Cameron. And I go into the room where his little workshop is, right? And there's a little circuit that he put together and there's a little red LED and it's flashing red. And he was like, you're wrong. There's an LED flashing red. And I'm like, what? Who else has a five-year-old that's going to go and build a fucking circuit yeah, to flash yeah. an LED, which I don't even know how to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? To, just to like make a point like that, right? Yeah, right. So it's like, when you look at all, oh, and my, my, my whole point with, they're learning all this. Like Seneca's learning ballet. Like you should see her, man. Hmm. Like she'll, the other day she comes in the kitchen and she she goes like this and then she spins around and then she goes down like, you know, with her knees, like how they do, right? Mm -hmm. And she goes, Cameron, that was arabesque. Or she was like, that was arabesque pirouette plie, <laughs> right? And she just like did it like all oh, like, bam, like, yeah. you know, she's like not even in a class, nothing. And my point is like, my kids are learning all these things and it's, and, and they can read yeah. at a super fucking advanced level. The odds of that, happening on its own is, is what was it we figured out the number it was like like four one in 44 million or one in 40 or something ridiculous right yeah of having two kids read that early and it's just because they happen to be hyperlexic or whatever right sure um and we're doing that all ourselves you know and What is the underlying point within all of these articles, if you think about it, is like, imagine, imagine if you didn't even know if a real person wrote this article. Mm. Imagine yeah. if it was literally just a machine that wrote it. Yeah. And they're already writing the algorithms to get the machines to write the articles, right? Yeah. So imagine the, the machine is like, we need people to not fucking raise their kids at home. Because if they raise their kids at home, these kids are going to be so stable. Yeah. They're not going to look to authorities to tell them what to do. They're not going to want to be in the metaverse and be controlled. They're going to want to do their own things and they're going to create their own stuff outside of the system, so to speak. Yeah. They're going to work together and that's going to lose control for the system because we need people to participate in this system. Right, right, right. It's like if you're Walmart, are you going to do anything inside of a Walmart that's going to make people want to go somewhere else? No, of course not. Are you going to have a TV on that's displaying Target commercials? Of course not. No, no. fucking way. So why would the economic system allow any point that's incentivized through money Yeah, that would allow people to do anything outside of that? Yeah. And it's funny because Mother's Day is here. And then suddenly it's like all these articles of like telling people why they should get divorced and right. why mothers should just pursue their careers. And also don't worry about, it's like, how can you say you're a working mother and you don't even raise your kids? And it's funny because what's the point of Mother's Day? Yeah, what it's is like, the point of Mother's Day? It's supposed it's, to be to like praise the, all the work that the mothers do to raise their kids and so forth. Right, and, and, appreciate and, and appreciate the mothers so the mothers can feel good about themselves. So it's like these articles come out on the day that like- oh, to make, Yeah, so to, but it's literally yeah. attacking being a mother. So it's like, I'm a working mother. It's like, you're a mother. That's a social construct. Yeah. To say that you're a fucking mother because you had a kid, you gave birth. Does that alone make you a mother? Isn't that what you were saying earlier? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what these conservatives are saying, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but again, that doesn't make you a mother. Yeah. A mother is a rule. Also. Yeah. You know, it's like, think about a race car. What makes something a race car? It's very fast and it can... Right, but imagine you build a race too. car and then you put it yeah. in a museum and you never even turn it on. Yeah. Yes, it is a race car. I mean, I technically, agree. it's a race car. Yeah, it's, it's a race yeah, car. Yeah. Yes, and you can't put a little Honda Civic in there that's like a stock engine and all that. Be like, that's a race car. You're like, no, <laughs> that's not a race car, right? Okay, but 
Also, you have the race car that you built and it doesn't ever go on a race. It's not fulfilling its function as right. a race car. So there right. is a performative role aspect to being a mother. Yes. But they're saying, see, so you could just detach that from the physical reality that's required and anyone can do it. Yeah. So now you're like, oh, my little fucking tank, my tank, my M1 Abram tank can be a race car now just because it's racing. It's like, it's not the same thing. Right. You're misusing the purpose of it. Right. Yeah. Right. So on this Mother's Day, Buy we, yourself honor, a tank. We, we honor all mothers who are actual mothers and who actually take full responsibility for their, for their children and for their husband and for themselves. And we also honor the fathers that take full responsibility for bringing children into this world and for making that commitment and agreement to support their children and their wife and themselves, but then to also do it within principles so that you don't just go along with the fucking system into total slavery so that you can actually support other people outside of your family. Cause nobody wants to take responsibility for another person's family. Yeah. Right. Because you can't physically do it, but you can take responsibility by not accepting and allowing things that make it shit for everybody, including yourself. And that's part of the next phase is you have stable families, but then those stable families can actually have an influence in the system. Yeah. Right. That's, that's what's to come. All right. Any other closing thoughts? See God. Uh, no, I was going to reiterate that point of like the way we actually change society moving forward is done through the family structure, not through these, you know, kind of mitigating symptoms of, you know, accepting trans or, you know, allowing abortion, all these things like those are just symptoms to the root of the problem, which is really starting from birth and how you're raised. And that's what we do really well in this group, you know, through the examples of Katie and Cameron and you know many other parents that are taking this on so investigate what everyone's doing within this group because it's within principle and not just valuing like how everyone feels or you know what someone just believes it's like no look at this for yourself and it's something that's replicable and you can take it on you know for yourself as well and your family so that's, yeah, that's well said if, if we just place value on if somebody feels that it's valid Right. You know how they always make this argument of, oh, you're just trying to like act like gay people are pedophiles or something. It's like, no, I'm not. But if you're just saying if it's valid because you feel it, well, then how do you prevent that part when that part of the conversation comes? Right. How do you say, how do you make a stand suddenly? You don't, because eventually they'll be like, yeah, but you know, we need to evolve again. It's just constantly you're evolving, but it's just in your mind. Yeah. According to your feelings and so forth. Right. So um, if you haven't, I suggest come on the Self Perfect Hangouts on Friday night. Uh, participate there. We have special secret, not really actually secret groups that you can be a part of. There's a women's group. There's a men's group. Um, they're exclusive. They're exclusive. Yeah. That's what I mean by secret. They're exclusive. Like you can't just randomly test it out and dip your feet in and join, but, but you can do that. If you join self perfect you just have to answer a few questions when you join the group um, as to make sure you're not just some troll or spam bot or, you know, whatever, <laughs> but, uh, but otherwise uh, anything else, Drake? Uh, that's it we'll see you okay. guys next week Bye. actually we'll Excellent. see you next week that's right <laughs> physically, physically. <laughs> <laughs> bye. bye everybody bye, bye.